Beating rocks. Beating rocks. Do 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 do. Reading rocks. Imagination Vacation, Colorado. Written and illustrated by Anastasia Kirst. Read with special permission from the author and the publisher, Eternal Summers Press. Mom, what are you imagining, Emmeline? I think those little blue dots are sapphires that fell from the bracelet of the giant Queen of Winter. It broke when she slipped on the rug, and that's where all the mountains came from. What do you think? Well, mountains are formed in several ways. Pikes Peak and the other mountains you see down there were formed by plate tectonics. The earth is made up of layers. The outside layer, where we live, is called the crust. It's part of the lithosphere, which is a hard, rocky layer. The lithosphere is made up of 52 separate pieces called plates. Each plate rests on the mantle, which is made up of hot, partly melted rock. The plates can slide around, kind of like the rug on the floor you imagined. When the plates run into each other, one has to slide under the other. This is called subduction. It causes wrinkles in rugs and in the earth's crust, except that the wrinkles in the earth are huge, and we call them mountains. As for the little blue dots, let's save that for another day. Hey, Dad! What's up, Oliver? See that snow up there? Last winter, about a thousand kids climbed up there and built a giant snow fort. It was so big and they used so much snow that it lasted all summer. What do you think, Dad? Well, there is a lot of snow up there, Oliver. But your snow fort is actually a glacier, a huge, heavy lump of ice that forms when snow piles up faster than it melts. A glacier has so much ice that it doesn't melt away during the summer. Rocky Mountain National Park was covered by them in the last ice age. As the glaciers slid slowly down from the mountains, they formed the land in interesting ways. They pushed rocks into piles called moraines and even carved out big U-shaped valleys. Emmeline, remember the sapphires you noticed from the plain? Those are actually lakes left behind when the glaciers melted. Mom, Dad, I know where all this sand came from. What are you thinking, Emmeline? The giant's baby was getting into trouble, so they built him a sandbox to play in. That wasn't it, Oliver interrupted. What was it really, Mom? In this case, there is a giant playing with the sand, the wind. Sand is carried to the valley by rivers and streams. The wind sweeps that sand off the valley floor and carries it through the air. When the wind hits the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, it slows down and the sand lands here in the Great Sand Dunes National Park. The wind keeps pushing the sand up against the mountains, and the streams keep carrying the sand back to the valley. Wow! I know what this is! What is it, Oliver? Mom asked. It's a dinosaur sandwich! T-Rex got hungry, so he made a dino sandwich. But before he could eat it, a volcano erupted. He ran away and his sandwich was covered with rocks. That's what you see here. Seriously, a dino sandwich? Dad, Emmeline groaned. Well, it was kind of like a sandwich. These dinosaurs are fossilized. When the dinosaurs died, they were covered by sediments, small rocks like gravel, sand, and silt. The sediments formed layers like a sandwich. Over time, water in the ground soaked into their bones and the minerals carried in that water replaced the bones, creating a fossil.
you can see dinosaur fossils in Dinosaur Ridge, Dinosaur National Monument, and many other places in Colorado. There are even fossils of dino tracks and dino poop. A fossil poop is called a coprolite. Fossil poop, really, Dad? We all know what this is, shouted Emmeline and Oliver. All right, let's hear it, Dad said. It's a parade of pink and orange land sharks. Mom laughed. You two have some wild imaginations. What is it really? Oliver asked. If you came here hundreds of millions of years ago, you would have seen a different range of mountains, the ancestral Rockies. Over time, those mountains were destroyed by erosion. Erosion is the breaking up of rocks and dirt by wind, water, or ice. Bit by bit, grain by grain, water and wind carried the mountains away, and those sediments washed down here to create layers of sedimentary rock such as sandstone. When Pikes Peak and the new Rocky Mountains were uplifted, the sedimentary layers were tilted. You can see tilted rocks like these in other places in Colorado, like the Flatirons in Boulder. Erosion is still shaping these rocks today. So, what will our next adventure be? Now that we've taken an imagination vacation in Colorado with Emmeline and Oliver, let's take a look inside the Garden of the Gods Visitor and Nature Center and check out our exhibit that's all about the rocks that you'll find in the park. Now the oldest rocks in the Garden of the Gods are about 300 million years old. Although this is certainly ancient, the Earth is estimated to be 4.6 billion years old. The rocks in the Garden of the Gods represent only the last 7% of the planet's long history. The Garden of the Gods story is remarkable because of the great span of the Earth's history is represented in its rocks. Over a distance of about a mile, you can see hundreds of millions of years of geology exposed. Let's take a look at some of the rocks that you can see in our exhibit. The first one we'll look at is the Pikes Peak Granite. Now granite was formed as hot molten rock deep underground. It slowly cooled and crystallized, making it an igneous rock. Granite makes up most of the local Front Range Mountains, including Pikes Peak. Can you see some of the minerals that make up this granite? Some are Feldspar, which is pink and blocky, Quartz, which is white to gray and rounded, and Mica, which is black and shiny. One billion years ago, when this granite was forming underground, Colorado was covered by a sea. The next one we'll look at is Lion's Sandstone. Now sandstone may be white, pink, or red, depending on the amount of rusty iron cementing its white grains. Sandstone is a sedimentary rock, and Lion Sandstone makes up the park's tallest white and red cliffs, including the Gateway Rocks. When the Lion Sandstone was deposited as dunes about 250 million years ago, all the continents of the Earth were moving together, and the Colorado area had a very dry climate that was like that of the Sahara Desert today. The next rock we'll look at is called Dakota Sandstone. Dakota sandstone is a tan-colored sandstone, sometimes with a bronzy varnish or nodules. It's a sedimentary rock. The sands of this sandstone rock are beach sands, deposited as an inland sea began to invade North America beginning 110 million years ago. Dakota sandstone forms a tall ridgeline on the east side of the park. This gravel stone made of cemented particles of many sizes is a sedimentary rock. Fountain conglomerate rock is found throughout the west side of the park, 
balanced rock, the three graces, and Siamese twins formations are made of fountain conglomerate rock. The gravels that make up this rock were carried out of the ancestral Rocky Mountains about 300 million years ago, when this part of North America was located in the tropics. This next rock is called Lichens Dolomite. Dolomite, a form of limestone, is a whitish rock made of calcium magnesium carbonate and is sedimentary. The dolomite forms a hard, thin layer exposed on the east side of the tall sandstone cliffs. The lichens dolomite formed about 225 million years ago, when all the Earth's land masses were joined in the giant continent of Pangaea. This final example is called Neobrara limestone. This limestone is tan-colored sedimentary rock containing calcium carbonate. Limestone forms the backbone of the easternmost ridge in the park. This limestone accumulated beneath the waters of the inland sea that spread across North America about 110 million years ago. Well, this wraps up our reading and our exploring of the Garden of the Gods Visitor Nature Center. I hope that you had some fun and that you learned something new. We'll see you next week. Reading rocks, reading rocks.